All right, so continuing on graphing functions, <coughs> uh, we have another real-world situation. And in this one, we're going to uh, identify whether we are continuous or discrete. Um, so a local cheesemaker is making cheddar cheese to sell at the farmer's market. The amount of milk used to make the cheese and the price at which he sells the cheese are shown uh, with my lovely cutouts from the book. Uh, write a function for each equation, graph each function, and then we're going to answer is the graph continuous or discrete. So for the milk, because we have two different functions, right? For the milk, our weight of the cheese is equal to 16 ounces for every one gallon of milk. So weight equals 16 times gallons of milk. That's going to be our function or M for milk. So then if I come down here to make my table, I've got gallons and weight. And for zero gallons, it weighs zero. For one gallon, it weighs 16. For two is 32. Three gallons is 48. And four gallons is 64. And so then I can come over here and I can graph that uh, milk on the bottom. and weight across w-e-i-g-h-t and i'm going to count by ones on the bottom and we're going to count by eights going up so eight sixteen thirty two and I, the reason I'm not writing it on all every square is just because then it gets really cramped and can be hard to read. And then from there, we're zero, zero is our first point, 116, 232, 348, 464, and 5 would be up here at, oh, what would that be? Anyway, 5 would be up here, 5 times 16, whatever that is. Now, that is for every gallon, but we could make our cheese with maybe less than a gallon of milk or just slightly more. And so this is going to be a continuous graph. Why? Because we can do oops, the in-betweens, right? I can find for our ounces in between and then figure out how much that wheel of cheese would weigh. And so this is a continuous U -S graph. All right, so now wheel of cheese is going to cost $9. That's how much he's selling it for. So the cost equals nine times the number of cheese wedges or wheels we sell. And so number of wheels is going to be our X value, one, zero, one, two, three, and four. And then our cost is going to be whatever our number is times nine. So zero times nine is zero, nine times one is nine, two, times nine is 18, three times nine is 27, and four times nine is 36. And when we come to graph it, again, I'm gonna count by ones going on my X axis, and I'm going to count by nines going up. So nine, 18, 27, 36, etc. All right, so when x is 0, y is 0. When x is 1, y is 9. When x is 2, y is 18. When x is 3, y is 27. When x is 4, y is 36. When x is 5, y is 45. Now on this one, 
these are the wheels of cheese, right? We're not selling partials. We're just, you know, I can only sell a wheel of cheese. Or that's how he's selling them, are as wheels. So we're not selling half a wheel. We're not selling three quarters of a wheel. These are each individually distinct points and a distinct amount. So I'm not going to be able to earn anything between 0 and 9. I'm either going to earn 0 or I'm going to earn $9 or I'm going to earn 27. There's no like in between 18 and $27. And so that's what makes this discrete. Okay. All right. So again, continuous is when we have values in between our points. That makes sense. Uh, discrete is when we have exact values. We can't have anything. Or we won't have anything in between. All right. Last example for this uh, lesson is we are going to graph each of these function rules. And so we have an absolute value function and a quadratic function. Um, so that's when we have an x squared or where our power is to the second power. All right, with these, we make tables. There's no cheat for this right now. We make tables and we graph. So we have x comma y. I'm going to plug this in. I am going to do negative 2. Let me do, yeah, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. And that's what I'm going to do for both of these x, y, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. So then I just plug it in. Absolute value of negative 2 minus 4. Absolute value of negative 2 is 2 minus 4 equals negative 2. And then I'm going to do absolute value of negative 1 minus 4. That's 1 minus 4, which is negative 3. And then we're going to do the absolute value of 0 minus 4, which is 0 minus 4. So we get a negative 4. We're going to do the absolute value of 1 minus 4. So that's going to be 1 minus 4 again, which is negative 3. Because remember, absolute value is the distance from 0. So it doesn't matter positive or negative. It's going to end up being a positive because it's a distance. All right, absolute value. Oops, not negative 2, just 2 minus 4, so we're going to end up with 2 minus 4, which is negative 2. And then I graph these points, so negative 2, negative 2, and then I'm at negative 1, negative 3, and 0, negative 4, and 1, negative 3, and 2, negative 2. And an absolute, oh, go back. Two, negative two. An absolute value graph are V shaped and they go on forever. So that's an absolute value graph. And then I'm going to do the same thing over here and I'm going to do negative two squared plus one. So I end up with four plus one, which is five. And I'm going to do negative one squared plus one. And negative one squared is one plus one. So we got one plus one, which is two. Well, that doesn't look like a 5. There we go. And then 2. And then we're going to do 0 squared, which is 0, plus 1 is 1. Then we do 1 squared plus 1, which is 1 plus 1, which equals 2. And 2 squared plus 1 is 4 plus 1, which is 5. And then we graph these points. So negative 2 comma 5 negative 1 comma 2, 0, 1, 1, 2, and 2, 5. Now, quadratics are not a V shape. They are a U shape, and that did not draw like I was wanting it to. Let's see, second time if I can get it. So they make a U shape. And so... That is how we are graphing anything that's nonlinear. These are not linear because 
they do not create a straight line. They are not increasing by the same number every time or decreasing by the same number every time. So, but we use a table to graph our functions. All right, until next time, eighth graders.